Greetings everyone and welcome to the Leader Sound series. I'm Shreyan and today we have with us author, professor, leadership and culture coach, Gary Rich. Gary has 25 years of experience as chairman and CEO of WD40. He's also an adjunct professor at University of San Diego, where he teaches the principles and practices of corporate culture in the Master of Science in Ex Executive Leadership program. Gary has been with WD40 since 1987 in various management positions, including Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer and the Vice President of the International Sector. He has worked with WD40 in over 50 countries, which is truly inspiring and we are extremely honored to have him here with us today. Welcome, Gary. Good morning. It's great to be with you. Thank you. The pleasure is ours, Gary. Gary, you have over 35 years of experience as a CEO, 25 years as a coach, and over 15 years of experience as a professor, which is truly inspiring. Please share a few highlights of your wonderful journey with us. Yeah, well, thank you. I think some of the, the really um, big highlights have been the opportunity to work with people. You know, organizations today uh, really need to focus on the power of their people and uh, having the opportunity to work amongst great people Having the opportunity to work across many cultures has been very, very exciting. Learning about diversity, inclusion, and belonging, and all of those things that people look for in, in their organization. And you know, finally, I think winning, look, working on the, the, the outcome of an organization where people go to work every day, they make a contribution to something bigger than themselves, they learn something new, they're protected and set free by a compelling set of values and they go home happy. And leaders today have a real responsibility to create cultures where people go home happy because happy people create happy communities and happy communities create a happy world and we need a happy world. Wow, that's very well said, Gary. You started off with how you, like, you enjoy working with people and that is truly inspiring. And that's very well said, Gary. So moving on, Gary, since the start of the pandemic, Organizational cultures have experienced disruption from remote work, the great resignation, and now the return to work. However, since the great resignation, we've seen uh, employee engagement take on a whole new meaning. With your expertise in this field, can you tell us more about how leaders can adapt and transform the organization in this culture shift? Sure. A lot of people have called it the great resignation. I called it the great escape. And why do I call it the great escape? My challenge to those listening to us today, are people escaping from or escaping to the culture in your organization? And if you think about great cultures, there's some elements that are very important. Firstly, are, the, as are you, are the, the leadership group dedicated to the fact that it's all about the people? Do you have a compelling and authentic purpose in your organization? Do you have a clear set of values that not only protect people, but set them free? Are you an organization that embraces learning? And are the leaders in your organization truly coaches? And our job as leaders is to help people step into the best, best version of their personal self. And if you think about a great coach, there's some attributes that are really important. A great coach never runs onto the, the field to kick the ball. A great coach is never at the podium to pick up the prize. A great coach is on the sideline observing and helping the player win. And a great coach spends a lot of time in the locker room. So our job as leaders is to create these cultures where people actually feel like and know they've made a contribution to something bigger than themselves. During the pandemic, leadership got what I call a slap up the side of the head. And they're actually recognizing now that it is all about the people. Oh, that's very well said, Gary. And how you spoke about the purpose and to get there. Leaders must passionately and clearly communicate the vision of the company and to make sure that the team is aware and how each member can contribute to the overall objectives of the, of the organization. That's very well said. Thank you for sharing that with us. So Gary, in one of your blogs, you said, to be a market leader, we must have a warrior spirit. We can be happy warriors, but we, must, uh, we have to be warriors all the same. Can you tell us what you mean by this and uh, how a tribal culture can help organizations learn and grow? Absolutely. One of the biggest desires we have as human beings is to belong. Everybody who is listening to us today will probably be able to reflect on a time when they've left a party, an organization, or even a relationship because they didn't feel like they belong. And the concept of tribal leadership is about 
looking at the elements that kept people together thousands of years ago. Uh, one of the main elements of tribal leadership is learning and teaching. And the number one responsibility of a tribal leader is to be a learner and a teacher. Warrior spirit is really about how do we come together to protect and feed each other? And, uh, you know, if you think about our spirit at the company that I led for many years, our warrior spirit was based on a group of people that come together to protect and feed each other. So, you know, these are, these are not fighting warriors. These are, this is a warrior spirit, one of determination, one of gathering together and protection. Oh, wow. That's very well said, Gary. And it is truly a, an inspiring culture to have in an organization where it's, it's a team that works together towards the goal when the leader is with you and guiding you with vision. And that's very well said. Uh, in, so, Gary, in times of crisis, we know that there is no manual for a leader to follow. However, you said that a leader who can empathize by being emotionally intelligent can adapt and empower their team in such circumstances. Can you tell us more about these qualities and the leadership style we as leaders must promote in our organizations? One of the, the, the main, um, one of the main areas that we need to really think about is, is our empathy eating our ego instead of our ego eating our empathy? Leadership is not about you. Leadership is about the people you have the privilege to lead the people that you have the privilege to touch every day. So, you know, as leaders, um, those that are short-term thinkers, those that are there really just for themselves, I uh, invented a, a character called Al, the soul-sucking CEO. And Al has some attributes. You know, Al must always be right. He thinks micromanagement is essential. He has all the answers. He hates feedback you know, some of these attributes that really do not bring people towards you. Because at the end of the day, we can't do it on our own. And if we're there to inspire people, we need to embrace them. So, you know, don't let your ego eat your empathy. Have your empathy eat your ego. That's very well said, Gary. And the most crucial thing that we can do is develop a culture where people feel comfortable speaking up and to make sure that uh, our leadership prioritizes uh, encouraging this freedom. And to make sure that when workers do speak up, they feel secure and confident and uh, they feel a sense of belonging in the workplace. So, Gary, you truly are a man of wisdom and you've shared some excellent insights with us today. Do you have any final anecdotes for the young leaders in our audience? And uh, if our viewers would like to reach out to you for your coaching program, what platform can they apply to this? Sure. Well, my, my advice to leaders who are developing their leadership style is, number one, it's not about you. Number two, get comfortable with the three most powerful words that you'll ever learn in your life. I don't know. And finally, embrace the learning moment. People hate the word failure. So don't make failure the fear of your organization. Make it the learning moment and have everybody embrace the learning moment. And I'm excited about my coaching platform, uh, which is called The Learning Moment. I'm the culture coach. Uh, my dream, my passion is to help leaders create cultures where people go home happy. And going home happy is not about popcorn and pizza. It's about creating a place where people go to work every day, they make a contribution to something bigger than themselves, they learn something new, they're protected and set free by a compelling set of values, and they go home happy. Happy people create happy families, happy families create happy communities, and happy communities create a happy world. And if people would like to follow some of my work, uh, I have a website, www.thelearningmoment.net, thelearningmoment.net, or please follow me on LinkedIn, um, and you can find me there very easily. So uh, I'm delighted to have had the opportunity to share some of my learning moments with you today here on the Leadership Hub. Pleasure is ours, Gary. It's, uh, it's been a great interview, and I'm sure our viewers are going to be truly inspired by the insights you shared with us, and I'm sure... It's going to be truly helpful for our, for our community. Thank you for sharing your valuable insights in the Leaders Talk series, Gary. That's it from our side. This was the Leaders Talk series.